The Cat's Whiskers podcast is proudly sponsored by the Bunkers Hill Hockley. Don't miss Panthers game day offers, including Coors Light at £2.50 a pint. <laughs> it's Monday the 30th of October. It's 8.45pm in Nottingham, England, 9.45pm in Zurich, Switzerland, and this is the Cat's Whiskers podcast, live... Hello and welcome to this week's edition of the Cat's Whiskers podcast. My name is John Bullard. We've got a packed show for you tonight. Lots to get through, so we're going to be looking back at Panthers games over the weekend against the Milton Keynes Lightning and the Coventry Blaze. We'll have our Player of the Week uh, award, as usual, and some statage from Tina that she sent us earlier today. We'll be talking about the Colton Fretta Spiros Golakis verdict, or the re-verdict that came out late last week, as well as the rest of the Elite League results and notable actions from the weekend before looking ahead to tomorrow, a huge game for the Panthers in the Champions Hockey League against the Zurich Lions, and then this weekend's games against the Guildford Flames, and once again against the Milton Keynes Lightning. So, who is with us tonight? Well, I'm delighted to say here is Tina Taylor. Hiya. Antoine Marijon. Ciao. And Adam Reddish. <laughs> Hello, can't live up to that. Yeah, no, no, nobody can live up to that, can we? Uh, uh, we'd also like to say that the four of us will be hot-footing it to Zurich tomorrow morning, so we've got a flight at early afternoon so we are hoping to do a few periscopes and podcasts during the day so uh, hopefully a pre-game and post-game podcast live from Zurich tomorrow so please please stay tuned for those uh, we, they will be on our usual social media outlets best one is twitter at cats whiskers tv and also the best one if you want to contact us during the show tonight we would love to hear from you if you would like to talk to us but we will start tonight's show by going back to Saturday evening, Panthers taking on the Milton Keynes Lightning for the first time in the Elite League. Panthers coming away with a 4-3 victory after overtime. Panthers goals from Alexander Mokshantsev, Dan Spang and Zach Phillips with a brace on his birthday. The Lightning goals came courtesy of Kevin King, Alex Forbes and former Panther Guillaume Doucette. The game also saw the return of Mika Wheatman and Tina, he was given a great welcome and an even better send-off at the end of the game. Yeah, well, I mean, it was just nice that we were able to do that, you know, with his with his injury at the end of the season. We didn't really get to give him any kind of, you know, well, I, I mean, I suppose we, we didn't know for sure whether or not he, he was going to be coming back. So, you know, it, we, there was never any sort of cheerio. So, yeah, it was just, just nice to be able to just give some recognition for a, a, a Panther that, you know, fully committed uh, for the years he was here. Absolutely. And uh, Adam, you know, he, he seemed to be a bit emotional at the end. Yeah, I think that... Um... He certainly looked a bit emotional. Um, I think he might have been a bit overwhelmed by the reaction, to be honest, because it, it was a it was a really sort of like rousing send off, wasn't it, at the end of the game? Um, and I guess any player really would be, you know, emotional at hearing the the fans, you know, shout his name and give him that sort of uh, that sort of recognition for his hard work in Nottingham over the two seasons. So um, yeah, it was nice, and, and like Tina said, you know. It felt all a bit sudden, you know, his departure at the end of last season. And, you know, a lot of fans would have wanted to have given him a, a send-off. And um, I think Saturday was you know, a very, very sort of fitting send-off for him. Yeah, and uh, he gave an interview at the end of the highlights on Panthers TV, if uh, well worth a watch. And he, he was, again, he seemed just very grateful to have got that reaction. Yeah, it was a nice moment for... Um, us to be able to um, say thank you. I think um, obviously we missed that out with K Wall. Um, we, we got that chance at uh, the testimonial, but then to do it in you know so soon after Mika left us, he, he spent two good years here, and, and you know he was a superstar in the Continental Cup last year. So 
yeah, thank you, Mika, and um, I hope he enjoyed his return. But um, like Moran said, I'm quite happy for them to take four points off us this season if it means we get um, two points in every game. I'll stay with you, Ant, because it was something that you, that you put on, on Panthers Hockey Live, something that a lot of people say. It was a quite fantastic game of hockey. Brilliant. Um, it had everything that I want to see in a hockey game. You had hits flying in left, right and centre. You had a, gu- a referee that wasn't quite able to control things. Um, so it was always bubbling away. You had a, a couple of scraps. Um, well, uh, one fight and a cuddle. Um, some fantastic highlight re- real goals. Um, they had You had pace. You had, you know... Chirping away at all the time. It was just fantastic. It was fantastic to watch. It's probably the game I've enjoyed most this season, um, as as in actually being able to properly enjoy the game. Probably my favourite game is obviously going to be the Burn one. But my God, you know, I must have had three. Oh, I think he's gone. I think he's you know, gone. It... Oh, he's back. He's back. <laughs> no, I'm still there. <laughs> Yeah, so what happened? Uh, you, you, you went, what happened? You, you disappeared for about ten seconds, oh. but no, ca- carry on, carry on. What? Actually, actually, I'd like to chip in. Go I on. think I'm done. I think I'm done. <laughs> Probably for the best. I'm spent. <laughs> Hashtag live problems. Yeah. <laughs> Go on, Tina. Sorry, yes. Um, yeah, but uh, what what an entertaining game. Uh, you know, I, I, I summed it up perfectly, to, to be perfectly honest, but. Yeah, I mean, the Milk Keys have got some fan tires. They've made some good acquisitions from, you know, existing elite league players that they have brought in from other teams. And they've brought in some good imports that, that you know, are new to the league. Uh, you know, they, they, they've, they've, they seem to have a nice balance uh, with, you know, and I hope they can retain that balance uh, now that uh, Gibson has played played his last game for them. Now he's had to unfortunately return home. Um, they, 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 they've, you know, come into the Elite League, taken the ball by the horns and, and you know, they, they, they're doing pretty well. They, they, you know, it's, it's it's good to see, you know, it's, it's good it's good for the league that, you know, we've got stable teams like that and teams that can actually, you know, turn up to somebody else's barn and actually give them a run for their money. It's, it's yeah, it's brilliant. Yeah, and I mean, as well as a quite superb game, a lot of highlight real goals, none more so than Panthers opener for another incredible goal by Alexander Mokshant said the Adam he, he just continues to, to delight well he does he does I mean we're running out of good things to say about him aren't we you know he just keeps pulling out these magic moments week in week out and you know he's, he's a little magician really well not quite little because he's about six foot <laughs> but um, you know he, he's just got that X factor hasn't he you just don't know what he's going to do um, and it's great to have that sort of unpredictability every shift uh, and because you know it, it makes it really really difficult for teams that play against us to know how best to shut him down because he seems to be able to get himself out of you know difficulty around the ice if he's in the corners he can find a way out um, you know he can stick handle around players in centre ice um, you know and he's got great vision when it comes to passing and you know we've seen repeatedly this season so far that his ability to to shoot from all sorts of angles and um you know find the top corners of the net and find the roof of the net and you know just the gaps on the goal where the net mind is showing a tiny little um slither of daylight you know he's great and he's, he's an absolute fine for us he's a real star and you know i imagine that tomorrow night he'll he'll raise his game again because it seems like he you know really shines in these um, these european fixtures so uh Hoping for more magic from him tomorrow. Yeah, more magic from the Russian magician. Uh, what more? <laughs> what more could we want? Um, of course, Milton Keynes were three-one ahead. Um, I think we, we forget about that. That they they were controlling the game at one point. But it's at one-one. Oh, sorry, at one-nil down. That I, I want to bring up something is Matthew Gagnon having another heavyweight tussle this time with Matt Nickerson, and a great fight, but also gave Panthers a lot of momentum and it was not long after that that Mokshantev went and scored that goal. And the other thing I want to bring up is uh, that I saw on the highlights, I didn't see on, on the night, is Gagnon turning to the bench after the fight had finished and almost shouting to the bench, like, yeah. come on, you know, book your ideas up. 
Yeah, it was a it was a proper right. Look, lads, I'm putting my bleeps on the line here. Um, I've done my job. It's it's time for you guys to to take this momentum now and use it. And it was, um, he's he's a bit of a character, isn't he? Um, I, I think he's becoming a bit of a fan favourite. If he if he wasn't one <laughs> solidified one already, uh, but not only that, the guy can play hockey, which you know, is fantastic. But yeah, it was a good good tussle. I enjoyed it, and obviously I won't be able to give you it as a as a decent uh, feedback as Mr. Hayward. But um, yeah, it definitely got the better of. Uh, Nickerson, um, and who many not many people can say that in the Elite League. So well done to him. But yeah, it was it was a buzz, and obviously the mock with another moment of genius. But then Dan Spang thought he well anything he can do, I can do as well. Oh, <laughs> Dan Spang, I mean, yeah, where where the heck did that come from? Yeah, I, I have no idea where Absolutely that came from. It, it was an, well, it was a, it was it, it was a bit like Billingsley's the other week. Yeah, yeah. So just, like Billingsley gets to the red line, he's like, oh, everybody's gone for a change. You'll sod it. I'll go through. But Spang was just like, do you know what? I can see a way through here. I'm going to goal. <laughs> and he did, and it was brilliant. Yeah, what what have our defencemen been eating? <laughs> I, I don't know, but do you know what? Just just line it up on a production line. Mm. Just at lunch, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Get it, get it down. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> just, just not to other elite league teams. Just keep it in house, right? No, no, <laughs> don't keep it in. <laughs> I, the other thing was at three-one down. It was a great, a lot of great character shown by the Panthers to fight back. A lot of people said that last season we'd have lost that game. I'd have been stuffed last last season, mm. to be honest. Yeah, and here we are, three one down. And I must admit, I was disappointed at three one down that we were two goals behind. But I never thought that we was going to lose it. We always looked that we mm. had it within us to come back. And and the game was so good. And so open, you just thought if we play the brand of hockey that that we have been playing, we'll get this back. And, and Adam, that proved to be the case. Yeah, it did. I mean, even when we were two goals down, I didn't feel that we deserved to be two goals down. Um, I don't think our play warranted that. Um, I mean, the, the tempo to the game was great for the whole you know duration of it. It seemed like it was playoff hockey. Uh, just everyone was was giving nothing away. Every shift, you know, guys were coming out, and you know, I noticed it more in the third period. But I think there was about a four or five minute spell where you know our guys must have thrown you know, a good six or seven checks and you know, heavy checks at that in the corners on the boards, and you could tell that the physicality in the team as we we're trying to fight our way back into the game was was really spot on. And and to me, that that really that that impressed me a lot because you know i think the panthers this year a lot of people think that we're all about finesse you know we score plenty of you know pretty goals highlight real goals but you know do we want to get our noses dirty do we want to do the the dirty stuff and you know throw those bone crushing checks well you know i think there's a really good response to that on saturday and we saw that you know we had to fight our way back from 3-1 down and you know look at some of the ugliest stuff that we have to do to win hockey games and you know there was just absolutely everything taking place in that game like Ant said it was one of those that you couldn't take your eyes off for a minute there was something happening all over the ice and I think in part that was sort of uh, influenced by by the refing because I think as as somebody alluded to earlier um, it it was quite light touch in terms of the officiating to be fair to Michael he he let it go he let it fly yeah he did anything that was out of line he called yeah, and, and yeah. The rest but, you just but, let the uh, players get on with it. Which, yeah, which no, no fair no play to. With. No, no, Ivan at all. Fair play to Michael because you know I think the way the game made for a much better game. Whereas you know you might have had a a more you know overzealous ref. Um, you know, give a few penalties early on in the game, and and it sort of you know sends a signal to the players that that sort of thing won't be tolerated, and you know, obviously you don't get as good a game out of it. So. No, I think that it had all the ingredients on Saturday for a brilliant game and it was a really, really watchable game. And yeah, getting back to what you were saying originally, I think the Panthers showed you know, real guts and you know determination to drag themselves back from, from 3-1 down to you know, ultimately get the two points. Now, another player who stood out, maybe for the wrong reasons, <laughs> on, on, sa- on Saturday night was the Milton yeah. Keynes uh, Lightning's Denny Kearney. Um he didn't exactly ingratiate himself to the NIC crowd, did he, Tina? <laughs> uh, do you know what? I bet Milton Keynes fans love him. 
Uh, he, he is that kind of player. He's like Belfast's Daryl Lloyd mm. um, or, mm. um, you know, Sheffield's Levi Nelson. Mm. He can play. Or Vezio yeah. Sacratini. <laughs> just to chuck in an older name. <laughs> oh, God. That, it, 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 just show off. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, he is. It, it, oh, he's, he's made the list. He's absolutely made the list. Oh, um, God. He, he, <laughs> he, he was a new entry at number three, I think. <laughs> oh, he's, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely, without a doubt. Uh, yeah, he, he's the kind of player that you you despise if you are the opposition. Um, but, you know, you can have a good old laugh at. And the, I mean, the really funny thing is, I'm, I'm right to remember he was a mid-season acquisition for Cardiff last, last season, wasn't he? he, he Wait, wasn't it was quite late the in the season. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't he, he wasn't on the the roster at the start of the season. No. And I, and I don't remember him having this much of an impact for Cardiff. I don't I don't know if he, if he actually did play that role or if he was just sort of finding his feet on that team or, or what. But... Um, yeah, you know he's he, he's definitely sort of put his stamp on on this Milton Keynes team, and he's you know he's he's doing whatever it takes. I mean, he's doing some stuff that is you know definitely flying under the radar of of referees, and he's doing stuff that you know is is not making him any friends. But you know why should he? Um, he's he's not here to make friends. He's here to win stuff. So yeah, as I say, why, why should he? But oh, good. God, was he infuriating. <laughs> oh, I wanted him to get punched. I really wanted him to get punched. <laughs> but the thing is, it, the yeah, it, 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 yeah, I mean, again, like like your Daryl Lloyds and your Levi Nelsons and your Kale Tanakas, just to chuck another name in there, because I will not not forgive me if I don't. Um, you know, I, they, 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 I know, I know, <laughs> but B, he is that kind of player. And he is that kind of player who will wind other players up um, to the point that they they want to punch him, but they will take a penalty because he won't, he won't want to punch back. I think it will, it, it's going to take a lot. Uh, to you know, to sort of drag him into anything like that, you, you you can't. He's the kind of player you can't beat him at his own game. So you've just got to make sure you play better. Mm. And uh, I I I have a problem with this type of player. I've got no problem with agitators. I never have. I mean, we we have one of the dirtiest agitators ever to play in the elite league in David Ling. Oh, <laughs> so, David Ling. Yeah. So, <laughs> but when David Ling was called to task. He stepped up to the plate. And this is what I hate about these agitators who don't do it. So, so Kearney was a classic example. Daryl Lloyd was mm. another one. They'd hide behind someone else or they'd run away. And I hate that. If you are going to be an agitator and if you're going to slash and if you're going to do stuff off the play, then at least have the guts to throw the gloves down when you get caught and you get challenged. I, mean, and I, I found that infuriating and I'm pretty sure you do as well. Um, it was a family friendly show isn't it so I've got to watch what I say here um, I can't get into trouble again um, he, he, I just there was a lot of people bagging on about him after the game um, and I just said it's it's Kevin Noble Mark 2 and uh, oh, I think how I've, I've forgotten I've, to reference Kevin Noble <laughs> I think I've gone I've, I've, I've gone perfectly on, on record before to what I'd like to see happen to Kevin Noble so I'm just not going to go there again I, I think to stay out of trouble I'm going to pass it over to Adam. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Ant. You're a, you're a mate. <laughs> I'm not going to take the splinters out of me bottom. Yeah. You're a cow. You're a coward, mate. <laughs> <laughs> not as much as um, is. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I was having a look at Kearney's stats earlier today, and I mean, to be fair to him, he is offensively gifted. Um, you know, he puts numbers up wherever he's. Been. Um, but you know, like you say, he plays with an edge, and sometimes you know he steps a bit too far, goes over the line, and you know other players you know, want to you know take issue with that. And I've got no problem with other players taking issue with that. But you're right, Jono. If if you go and you know skate away, or you know you turtle if somebody drops the gloves and starts to you know rag you about, I don't really like that because you know you've got to put up or shut up. Um, you know, David Ling is a perfect example that you cited. You know, he went around the ice causing all sorts of trouble, you know, with, with all sorts of trash talk with, with guys on the, the, the opposition. But he'd always be there waiting to fight. You know, he'd, he'd want to fight, actually. You know, he, he seemed to, you know, thrive on those sorts of circumstances. But, you know, Denny Kearney, you know, as, as offensively gifted as he is, I think that, um, you know, one of these days someone will, will catch him with, uh, you know, with a punch that might uh, might put him right down on the ice because... You know, he, he might rub somebody up too far and um, pick on the wrong guy. So and it happens Saturday, and it might happen Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, but this is the thing: 
say, for example, he rubs Matthew Gagnon up the wrong way. He's not going. He's not going to come well, out. Come out of that. Well. Well, would he? I mean, surely nobody is that well, thick. <laughs> well, he, he probably, They're like, uh, if give Gagnon a crack and slash if he had any, play when the refs are If looking. he had any sense, he'd probably, he'd probably turtle, and I wouldn't blame him. You know, no. it's, like, it's like people <laughs> said the same thing about Mosey when he had Fitzgerald bearing down on him. I mean, the, the only mm. thing to stop him from getting hurt was to, was to turtle. Was to turtle. But then, yeah. but then yeah. Mosey's yeah. not that sort of player. No, no. That, um, I point, mean, but. it's the same with Jordan Fox a few years ago with... Um, what was his name at Sheffield? Drew Fatter. Just, yeah, I mean, whatever, fo- what, whatever happened between Fox and Fatter, it calls for some right entertainment. Seeing Fatter chasing Fox around all over the ice and Fox scoring <laughs> man- magnificent goals. But Jordan Fox is, is not a dirty. You wouldn't class him as a dirty player. The likes of Kearney and Noble and Lloyd are dirty players, and they haven't got the. Mm, words that I can't Co- say to, yeah kahunas <laughs> that'll do um, to, to stand up for themselves I'm not expecting them to go toe to toe with like you said with gang on that's what um, Nickerson's there for but if someone say the likes of Robert Farmer had a go or Bree's Bar or, or right. Shallow whoever uh, uh, Brown yeah then you know you're a similar height you're that, a similar well that race. was the thing I noticed it. It, bra- it, was, it, was, it was Brown who was having words with him and was basically saying, y- you better get your mitts off, mate, because I-, I am going to put your teeth down your throat, <laughs> I think, after one mm. particular incident behind the play. And he-, he just he just legged it off to the bench. And he's like, oh, come on. If, you- if you're going to do that, you've got to answer to it. But we'll leave Kearney mm. there for the time being. I'm- I- we'll probably be discussing it again next week. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, I think, on the whole, I've got to pay credit to Milton Keynes. They've not come up to the elite league to make up the numbers I think Peter Russell's assembled a really good team offensively gifted good net minded in, in, in Wheatman, I mean Wheatman is, is a, a great net minded, there's no two ways about it and you know, they're, they're playing four lines, they're doing it properly they've come up, they're not come up to make up the numbers they've come up to challenge and I think, fair play to them, they're doing brilliantly and they were you know, a joy, a joy to watch, and I think they they more than deserved a point, and I think they'll probably feel pretty aggrieved themselves that they didn't get the two. But mm. I was really, really impressed with them, uh, and I think they they took us all the way, and you know they're they're a good good side, and I think they're going to be in the running this season. Mm. Can yeah. I just uh, can I can I just sort of jump out of order a little bit? Just a, just a couple of interesting um, stats related to Milton Keynes that I had sort of picked out for, for the, the section you sort of highlighted later. Yeah. Um, Milton Keynes haven't lost at home yet in the league, um, but they only have one away win in the league. So mm. home form couldn't, couldn't be better, but uh, you know away form they, they they seem to be struggling a little bit, and I think you know it's not it's not like all straight losses you know either. I mean obviously they've taken a an overtime point away from the NIC, so you know there the, the, the does seem to be a bit of a disparity. They don't, they're not travelling well at the moment, so mm. you know th- that obviously sort of leads into to Saturday when we go to play them. So that could be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. but that performance on Saturday from Keynes doesn't really strike me as coming from a club that travels poorly. Mm, you know, because yeah. <laughs> they they were more than the equal of us. You know, for and they large had a, and spells they had a of the very game, close game against Sheffield a couple of weeks ago, yeah. where they only lost by yeah. by one goal as well. That, that... And I know that you will come on to it later, but you know they beat Manchester the following night. So, yeah. um, admittedly at home, but it just shows you that. They have got good calibre players and, you know, they can be very, very damaging and threatening on any given night. I thought the fans were great as well. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Yes. They were yes, they were. The whole sold out, pretty much sold out um, the block, two. block that they've been allocated so, yeah. and, and they were noisy all night. And uh, from chatting to a few of their fans before the game, apparently they don't really travel that well. They don't really take that many fans down with them. Um, but the ones that do go are a bit rowdy. But because of they see it as a big attraction coming to Nottingham. It's the first first time here, and that's no doubt that's the same reason why we've sold out four blocks in Milton Keynes for Saturday. You know, mm. first first time events and all this lot. So, yeah, I thought the fans were fantastic as well. I just wanted to give them a, a, a nod. Mm, absolutely. Before we we leave, it, I think it'd be 
uh, wrong, not to mention Zach Phillips, who I thought was outstanding on Saturday. I think, personally, I think he's been outstanding all season. I think, he, uh, for me, one of, if not the best player on the roster. I think he's brilliant. I think his passing ability is fantastic. He works hard. And finally, he got the goals that his play has deserved. And what pearls mm-hmm. they were. Yeah, uh, An outstanding strike to equalise. And then the power play goal from an angle, which was good to win the game in overtime which was quite phenomenal mm. did you say power play goal John? I did say power play <laughs> goal more, wow, more on that nice. later but <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> but I, 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 I thought Phillips was outstanding and I think he's been I, outstanding I was most of the so season it's a- yeah, for, for me, Zach Phillips, aside from, from a, a wayward poke check that went to a Steelers player that put a goal past us, I don't think he's done much wrong. I, mm. I really I, I don't. I like, I like watching him because you can, you can just see the cogs turning. You know, he's, he's, he's always think, he's, he is a thinking, he's a thinking oh, hockey player. You he's took the really line out from me there, Tina. I was yeah. going to say, he, he's the thinking man's hockey player. <laughs> yeah, so, well, I, I, I didn't want to put it quite like that. But yeah, he, 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 you can just see he's just, he's just <clears throat> looking at it all. He's taking it all in. And he's, he, he is... He, he's almost got that that David Ling capacity for passing. His passing you know, ability it, is, I, it's, I would it's, say, it's the stunning. best we've had since Ling. Yeah, it's, mm. I mean the thing is, Bruce Graham always used to say, if you get yourself get yourself open on the ice, Linger will find you. And and I think that you know, with with the right sort of mentality in you know a. a, a a forward partner for Zach Phillips, we, we could see, you know, if, if that connection gets made, we, we could see a, a boatload of goals going in or, or at least, you know, quality shots on net that netminders have really got to work hard to keep out. So uh, he's, he, he is an absolute gem of a find. And I really, I, I really want, you know, I really want the strike partner that, that you know, he, he needs to be, or, you know, the, I want the strike partner to be the, the willing and deserved recipient of a Zach Phillips pass. Uh, yeah. ev- you know, every game, every shift, if possible. You know, that's a pipe dream. But you know, just uh, yeah, that's that, that. That's what needs to happen. That they, they need, it, if we get that kind of connection, they, Zach Phillips is a weapon yeah, waiting to happen. I seem to think wasn't he on a line most of the night with Lacko and Machansev as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, I uh, noticed which that actually last not week seen before. when I went to the sponsors' training session, it was that that was the line that was <coughs> put together uh, in the training session. So uh, it was it was interesting to see that the lines from the training session were, were the lines that played on Saturday night. So yeah, three, so, three goals from one line. It's not bad. Not a bad return. Yeah. When everyone because I know people go on about Corey changing his lines, but you know they'd obviously been training like that for most of the week yeah. so yeah and it seemed to work because on Sunday night Panthers travelled to the Sky Dome never usually a happy hunting ground for the Panthers but Panthers coming away with a 3-2 victory to complete an excellent four point elite league weekend Panthers goals coming from Jan Sove and Brett Pellini with two all yes all on the power play Panthers Elaine. power play one hundred percent. Three for three. I was I, I was do, I was doing Panthers hockey live because I had the webcast and and uh, and you wouldn't you wouldn't believe it. You know when I start when I started tweeting oh power play goal power play and I, and I tweeted something along the lines of you're not going to believe this we've scored a, a third power play goal somebody pinched me and they, and I just got a raft of gifts going you're lying I don't mm. believe you think so it didn't happen you know it was just all these all these gifts just rolling in and it just it just made me chuckle so hard. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, three power play goals out of three power play opportunities for the Panthers, making it a weekend of four. Power Power play goals out of five opportunities, eighty percent on the power play. Um, Blaze goals coming from Brett Robinson and Ryan Dingle. A welcome two points in the venue that we struggle in, Tina. But Tina, I do want to come to you first because I'm taking all the credit. Yeah, I'm taking all the credit because you, of course, wrote Blazers <laughs> team talk for them. Yeah, although I, I would like to make a public apology to the Coventry Blaze because my team talks are obviously rubbish for you. You carry on. <laughs> You carry on, Doc. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fine. I, 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 I intend to. I'm, I, do you know what? In fact, we need to steal that two-minute clip back and play it every time we're previewing a, a Blaze game. Because, yeah. you know, that, that, that's got to happen now. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, I mean, I, I said it last week. We don't do well traditionally at the Sky Dome. As much as I love going to the Sky Dome, we don't... We, it's not often that I'm coming out, you know... 
happy. <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's great when we do. Um, and I, I, I would like to, I would have liked to have been down there because you know probably every other time that I go down this season, it's, it's I'm, I'm going to be holding my head in my hands again. But yeah, I, I, it, it was really good to see. I mean, it wasn't it wasn't a demolition, and you know both teams. It, it was both teams played well. It was quite, you know, free flowing at times, and then at times it was like just riddled with mistakes at the same time from both teams. You know, you had a bit of, um, you know, a few giveaways. Uh, you know, some some you know some good um, breakaways. You know, it, it kind of it kind of had everything, and it felt like it didn't feel like a game that frustrates mm. a Panthers fan like it usually does you know I mean normally you're sort of at the sky dome and you're just waiting for it all to just you know come out horribly wrong and just you know come out at the end of a four or five goal deficit you know but it, it just never felt like that at any point so it, it, it was just it was a, a great game to watch because because of you know how much we traditionally struggle down there it, it yeah it, it was just it was just nice to see a Panthers team that that competed in the sky dome where in, in previous seasons, we've we've just lost we've just lost the plot all of a sudden. Yeah, uh, but going back to the power play, three for three, four for five over the weekend. Adam, it was something you, you mentioned on last week's podcast mm. about the players organically running the power play. Probably yeah. is that what what, what yeah. has changed? Because it, it just looks so much better and was and oh, it did. producing results. It did. I mean, it is infinitely better than power plays that we've seen and experienced over, well, I should say, endured over the last month or so. Um, and, and there did seem to be a, a lot more freedom about the players on the power play. You know, the, there was more movement for starters. And that was really noticeable yesterday um, in Coventry. And, you know, I think whenever you've got your forwards and your, your D-men that are out there on, on the power play units moving around... It makes it hard for the opposition to to understand, you know, where that next pass is coming from, and I mean, it looked like we we certainly changed our tactics and our strategies a bit on on the power play units, and I noticed as well the puck was moved quicker, and that's another key factor. I think if if you want your power play to be effective, you've got to get that puck moving quickly because otherwise you become static and, and predictable and. You know the the penalty killers. You know have got a better idea about what's going to come next, and generally uh, they can, they can shut down the power play easier. So you know I think all those ingredients of a good power play were there: quick puck movement, but you know the players zipping around, interchanging, moving around. Um, you know not spending too much time in the, the you know a static position. All those things you know were were really evident last night, and and hopefully it's. Uh, you know, it's a sign of better things to come for the Panthers power play throughout the rest of the season. Mm, absolutely. Uh, Robert Farmer had a goal washed out just before Panthers scored their second for the net being off his, his moorings. It went to a review. I must admit, I thought it was a little harsh, but I'm not going to argue because the referee reviewed it and, and watched it out, so fair enough. But you guys were watching the podcast. Uh, what was your thoughts? Hmm. Difficult, really. I, I think the, I think the net was dislodged just before the put went in. So I've I've got no qualms about the you know the sort of timings and the sequence of what happened first. Um, you know, was the was the cage deliberately knocked off? I don't know. I'm not I, sure. I, Perhaps I think the, the nets at the Sky Dome and they're notorious. I know they're notoriously very, very uh, loose. You, you don't really well, have to do the only to dislodge thing, them. The, the only thing I would say is that. It uh, it didn't happen to Patrick Galbraith. Wow! Well. <laughs> I'm just uh, you know just to, just to throw the controversial point out there. The only time that the net came off where, when Galbraith was in front of it was when one of our players and a blaze forward uh, was steamrolling into it. That's mm. that's, that's that was it. Um, you know, only only Kevin Nasty up knows whether or not he kicked that net off deliberately, but. You know, they, until until they get that sorted, this debate's going to be raging on, back and forth, and we're all going to have our opinions about it. Um, yeah, until until they start drilling them, <laughs> like like you know, like we do at the NIC, this is going to wage on for me. Mm. 
I mean, Panthers are now just one league loss in eight and are at 0.75 out, have the best win percentage in the league. Uh, I mean, and it's looking good at the minute. Yeah, it's um, looking promising. Um, games in hand don't mean anything until you win them. Um, and we'll be interesting to see what we've got left going into this coming weekend after, after our travels tomorrow. But certainly it's been a really good start to the season. We've had a couple of blips. I mean, the, the Brayhead game, I still look at back at that and go... Well, yeah. I actually look back at that now and go, why wasn't it a cup game? Because I thought the ruling was the first time you played the team in your cup group, it had to be a cup game. But, mm. but um, yeah, apart from that, really, we've you know we were unlucky in the cup against Sheffield. Um, we've we've generally performed, although we've not performed to as consistently as we had in the Champions League. We're winning games, and we're you know the goals are being spread around all over the team I mean I noticed some criticism levied at you know a couple of our players who people are expecting to be scoring hat-tricks every night I think <coughs> but um, as long as the goals are coming from the rest of the team and the work in particular Delago and Sh- Shala do off the puck I think that the, the work they do creates space for everybody else so yeah long may it continue and to win in the Sky Dome was fantastic and, you know well done and thank you Tina for a fantastic team talk you're welcome <laughs> you're welcome everybody okay we'll, we'll move on to some of your comments that uh, you put on the player of the week voting forms and um, don't forget you can do that every week and we'll uh, reveal the player of the week very very shortly uh, but some of the comments great to see the team have worked on the power plate we need to keep this kind of evolution going absolutely Four massive points. Saturday's game was the most entertaining game of hockey I've seen this season. Great play by both teams. Some really good physical play. It felt like a playoff game. I think, Adam, that's some, something me and you would have said. At the yeah. Time. The intensity was great, wasn't it? You know, it like every shift seemed to mean something to the players. And um, I know that... Um, you know, there, there were some pretty fierce checks being thrown around in the third period, and I mean that's that's testament to the fitness levels of both teams, really, that they could still, you know, do that in the third period and have enough energy in the tank to, um, you know, go up and down the ice. I mean, it, at times it resembled a basketball game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. just one end to the other end, back to the other end, and you know, as I said earlier, there was just something happening every shift almost. And it was uh, quite captivating viewing. Mm. Uh, good four-point weekend, but can't we win easily for a change? Not good for the blood pressure or nails. <laughs> it wouldn't be a Panthers team if we won easily. Get out of yeah, here. Yeah, it's good. part of being a Panthers fan. It's part of being a Panthers fan that you have several heart attacks over the course of a 60-minute game. <laughs> Phillips was brilliant. The whole team stood up to Blaze attacks really well. And where did those power play goals come from? Uh, Zach is getting better and better. Galbraith looks better than Garnet at the moment, but both are excellent. And another one that before before we talk about that, uh, a very satisfying weekend. Galbraith once again showing his quality in Coventry, and surely there's a case now to say he's the number one netminder at the club and should get the better games. I mean, your feelings on that? Because uh, I thought Garnet was superb on Saturday night. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I didn't see the yeah. commentary game, so I can't comment on Galbraith, but he, he had a lot of rubber at him. Yeah. Mm. Well, I mean, that, as, as this sort of in the trend a little bit, um, we, we actually um, we actually had more shots on Galbraith than we put on Nastyuk. So that you know, we, we've so far this season, you know, we've we've, we've sort of commented on it on previous podcasts. How we, we're just you know rocketing an absolute ton of shots at opposition netminders and not not getting as good a return as we'd hope from those shots. But yeah, so you know, Gal Galbraith saw a lot more rubber than his his opposite number, which is is, is a bit of a you know a bit of a, a flip. For, from what we've seen so far, generally speaking, but he, he, he looked steady. He, he really did look steady, and obviously somebody told him about the gold pegs, like I asked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right. Um, we've also got some statage, Tina. You've been looking so, so pick pick out your interesting stats from the weekend. 
Um, well, I mean, I'd, I've, I've sort of because it's come to the close of, of October, I've, I've sort of been gathering a few uh, a few bits and bobs. So um, we, we've talked about the power play. Uh, it's it's currently at twenty point eight percent. September saw us uh, dip to fourteen point three, but those three power play goals uh, on Sunday and the one on uh, on Saturday have seen us rocket up to thirty percent. So uh, I also you know, had to look. At, I also had to look at the ta- the power play table where we were rock bottom mm. last. Week, 12, yes, yes, we were. Now, se- now <laughs> yes, seven. Yes, we were. Now seven. Yeah, it did. This weekend, so a big lift. W- what a difference two days makes. It's absolutely mm. bonkers. Um, so th- th- just a few observations are sort of made as well. Uh, the Panthers haven't lost to Pattern Conference opponents yet. Uh, we've had four games. I can see um, a Pattern emerging here. Uh, hey, thank you. Um, <laughs> here all week. <laughs> and and also, and uh, just, just just I mean, yeah, we, we haven't played them for a little while, but they, they, they're going to be coming to get up again soon. Um, Belf- Belfast's only in conference losses have been to Panthers so far. They've had three wins over Sheffield, a win over Cardiff, and uh, two losses. Uh, to us so far, so uh, that's, hey, long, that's, that's, long that's good. That's good. Yeah. Well, yes, indeed, but that's going to be an interesting little series. They're going to be they're going to want to even that up uh, quite quickly, I would say. Um, just to, sort of rocking back to special teams, our penalty kill uh, is yeah. You know, I've, I've for, for years I have said you know I like the look of our penalty kill. It's always been you know pretty solid. I think we can safely say that uh, you know Rob Lakovic is our penalty kill specialist. He always uh, you know he seems to he seems to be the first man out there uh, quite a lot. Uh, currently running at eighty one point eight percent. It's taken a little bit of a dip uh, this mm. month from last month. That so, was fourth, you know, I think fourth out of the twelve. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean it's, it's, it's not it's not. Yeah, it's not um, it, it's not bad, you know, but by any, any means. But you know, we, we want to make sure that focusing on the power play doesn't mean that the penalty kill is suffering. Uh, just a little bit of a roundup as well, as I say, last last couple of months, just a, a, a few little things have collected. Uh, we're scoring first. We are five wins, one loss, and no um, one pointers. Uh, and when we're ahead or even after two periods, now this is interesting, we are 8 0 and 0. So mm. if we are if we are ahead or even in the first two, uh, generally speaking, at the moment, we're winning. So, you know, that, that's, uh, that, that's a, a cute little stat, uh, basically. Uh, so far, where we are at the moment, um, Panthers top scorer is uh, Pellini uh, in, in top points. Uh, with 13 points, eight goals, and five assists, uh, nipping at his heels is Jan Sove. Uh, in, in that that that, um, that, that defenceman, <laughs> <laughs> not not that that not very stay-at-home defenceman, uh, with 11 points, three goals, and eight assists. Um, top scorer in goals is is Pellini. Top assists is Sove. Um, top penalty minutes, no prizes for guessing. Um, is first is uh, Matthew Gagnon, uh, with 23 minutes, and uh, is that second. All? Yeah, I know. That's li- but that's just league. That is just no. league uh, penalties. He's got time to build that up. Yeah. Um, second, you may not have guessed, um, but uh, Raphael Bussier mm. uh, is, uh, and that surprised me actually when I was having a look at that. But then I did look back. He's actually had two fights this season in the league, so uh, that sort of uh, helped bump his total up a little bit. Mm. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much for that. So it's now time to reveal our player of the week. Get the drum roll ready. In third place. Is Patrick Galbraith in second place? Two goals last night. It's Brett Pellini and in first place. A quite excellent weekend for Zach Phillips, who for the first time picks up the Player of the Week award. No place in the top three for Alexander Mokshansev. I think that's for the first time. <laughs> I demand this a season. recount. It's for the first time this season. He was a very close fourth, actually, believe it or not. <laughs> but uh, yes, congratulations well, to Zach Phillips, a well-deserved player of the week. Uh, and next week, we will have the player of the week and also the player of the month collated from your nominations throughout October. Okay, moving on to the Nottingham Lions. Uh, last night saw them play against local rivals, the Sheffield Steel Dogs at the NIC. Unfortunately, it was a 6-0 defeat, the first time that the Lions have been shut out this season. 
They will face Solihull Barons at the NIC next Sunday evening with a 7.30pm face-off. Lions' only win so far this season came in Solihull. So this is a much-anticipated clash. And with no Panthers game at all this Sunday, your support would be very much appreciated. £5 adults, £3 for Panthers season ticket holders. And children are free with a full-paying adult. So uh, get yourself down to the Olympic rink at the NIC if you can on Sunday evening. Okay, one of the big news items from the Elite League last week was, of course, the controversy involving Colton Fretta and Spiros Galakis of the Belfast Giants. Uh, Of course, if you don't know, Fretta was originally given a one-game ban for charging across the ice and hitting Galakis in the head. Galakis originally given a three-game ban for kicking. Um, There was a huge outcry about it, Uh, as TCW last Wednesday was pretty much dominated by this event. The Elite League uh, ordered a re-review with an independent panel which came to the conclusion that Colton Frettet should serve a six-game ban. So that has now been increased and Galakis has been given a two-game ban not for kicking but for putting the blade of his skate up. So... You know, a lot's been said about this over the past few days. Uh, and I'll ask you all, uh, and keep it keep it as brief as possible, have the Elite League saved face? Ant, we'll start with you. Um, I think it was the damage was done. Um, yes, the, the review was, was needed, uh, but I think that the damage is done. And your article refers to the many... Uh, the many uh, bits of journalism around the world that have brought light onto this, and I bet you none of them have picked up the fact that things have changed. Um, Which is why I but, tagged them you know, into the article. <laughs> yeah, uh, but you know, it has led to Kirkham being removed, um, so we may see things going different in the future. Okay, Tina. Yeah, like Anne says, damage was done. Uh, it didn't matter what they did after that. Giving a one one game ban to Colton Fretta, that was just. That that was mind blowingly bad, and I I, I, I don't like it. I, I I I've I've got nothing. I've got absolutely nothing to back this up with. But I refuse to believe that Simon Kirkham is that stupid that he would give a fight a one game ban to what somebody else would give six. Uh, you know, I, as I say, nothing to back it up. I just I just don't like it. Some something's something's wrong there. Something has gone horribly wrong in the elite league dots process. And they're going to have to go a very, very long way to restore confidence in that process with the Elite League fans. Adam? don't think there's really that much more to add. I think Ant and um, Tina have, you know, sort of expressed my feelings towards it really well. Um, You know, I think the overriding thing is that, you know, the horse has bolted. Um, You know, it, it, it gathered media coverage for all the wrong reasons around the world. And... You know, as as I think um, Ant just said there, you know, no one's probably picked up on the fact that, you know, a disciplinary panel has had another look at it and has come to, you know, a very, very different outcome and conclusion. That's not been reported at all as far as I've seen. So, you know, the the, the bad press coverage um, and all the, the negative headlines, you know, they've they've done the damage and you, you can't pull those back. Yeah. Um Tina, you mentioned Simon Kirkham there. Has he been thrown under the bus, do you think? I don't know if we can know that or not. Um, but, you know, he's, he's he's certainly, for, for, from events that have happened, he's become the scapegoat. He, he seems to be the guy who is taking the blame for this. But, as I say, I, he's, he's an experienced referee and this is not the first time he's been involved. This is not the first season he's been involved in a docs panel. So I, I just I just cannot fathom how he could get it so wrong. If he'd have got it like a game or two, you know, over or under, you know, fair enough. You know, everybody, everybody can everybody can make those sorts of mistakes. There are certain interpretations that, that you know, two different people looking, you know, or, you know, five or six different people looking at a piece of footage can take. But a five game difference, that's that's no. I just can't. I can't wrap my head around it, and just I, I, I may I may be getting adding one plus one and getting 
five. You know, mm. which is, but it, I, I just, I just can't, I can't explain it eloquently, and I can't put my finger on it. I just think something's not right, and I, I'm, I'm not convinced that. I mean, yeah, you know, I, I don't think we're ever going to know what happened unless, you know, unless there's some sort of you know, whistle blowing. You know, somebody's got some big story, big reveal they want to make to everybody. But yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm not convinced that the fault of this whole scenario lies at the feet of Simon Kirkham. Mm. Okay. Uh, what would you like to see from Doctor going forward? Because I must admit, <clears throat> the new review, the way it was laid out, the way it was explained, I thought was absolutely brilliant. It was beautiful. Be- be- clear, <laughs> con- precise, told you everything that you needed to know. Actually proved that the referee, supported the referee by saying he actually got that call on uh, Galakis spot on by not calling anything. It was a legal check. And you know maybe the refs do know what they're talking about. Maybe they do <laughs> know the rules. You take that back. Uh, how dare you? Yeah, but how dare I be in the person sat in the stands who's never read the rule book? <laughs> I'm no more than the referee, of course I do. No, I'm sorry, but yeah, I I was actually quite pleased to see that. I was quite pleased to see the support that Hicks got. I just thought, mm, fair enough. <clears throat> You're backing the referee there for the decision he's made, and, and it's about time they got a bit of support. But yeah, the the heart thought the whole review was fantastic, and I, and I would love to see that going forward. Every Dops review just laid out like that, and I don't think there'd be many complaints. Anyone? <laughs> oh, no. oh, I, th- I think you've spoken for us <laughs> exactly. <there. laughs> Nothing further to add. <laughs> Nothing further to add, Your Honour. Okay, so we, we'll, we'll leave that whole sorry incident there. I'm sure there will still be repercussions from that for, for weeks to come. But yeah, I, as, as mentioned, I did write an article about that. It is on the Cat's Whiskers website, TCW online. Oh, sorry, the Cat's Whiskers online dot co dot uk. Uh, go to blogs, and it is on there if you would like to take a read. Okay, the rest of the Elite League results. An interesting one on Wednesday night. Blaze beating the Caps seven one at the Sky Dome, but that led to an incident where there was a DOPS review. Uh, Danik Paquette getting a two-game p- penalty for, for... Sorry, a two-game ban for fighting. Uh, and the Edinburgh netminder, Shigalo, he will miss two games as well because he went in to protect his player prone on the ice, but unfortunately used his bo- blocker in Paquette's head. And uh, he also sees a two-game ban. So uh, quite an interesting game there at the Sky Dome. Uh, Caps were travelling to Milton Keynes on Thursday night, obviously a bit lighter. Uh, Milton Keynes coming away with a 7-2 victory there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, on Friday in the Cup, uh, Clan against the Steelers. Steelers coming away with a 3-2 overtime victory. In the Cup on Saturday, uh, Devils beating the Blaze 7-2. Blaze cannot qualify and couldn't qualify before that game. Uh, Devils have now qualified for the quarterfinals. In the league, it was Storm 9 and understrength caps once again nil. Uh, Clan 3, Giants 4 in overtime. Clan were 3 nil up in that game. Um, the Dundee Stars 2, the Guildford Flames 3, also overtime. And the Five Flyers 2, Steelers 1. Guess what? That was overtime as well. So uh, a lot of overtime games on Saturday night, including our own against Milton Keynes. On Sunday, the Milton Keynes Lightning travelled back to Milton Keynes and won 3-2 against the Manchester Did Storm. us all a favour. Yeah, did us all a favour, <laughs> the league leaders. Steelers coming away with an emphatic 6-0 victory over the Brayhead clan at Sheffield. Uh, the Caps, very brave performance against the Belfast Giants. Giants just scraping a 4-3 victory to give them a four-point weekend. Uh, the Five Flyers 3, the Cardiff Devils 5 and the the Guildford Flames 2, the Dundee Stars 2, but that was abandoned after the first period due to ice issues. So uh, not another not great news story for the Elite League with a game being abandoned after the first period. There's still no news on what will happen with that or whether it will be replayed. Going back to Friday night, uh, the Clan Steelers clash in the Challenge Cup. Um, reports that Levi Nelson 
but did a bad boarding on Zach Sullivan. Zach Sullivan had to be carried off the ice and has not featured for the clan since. Uh, no news yet from Dops as whether that will be reviewed because no penalty was given on the night. Um, so clan will have to put a request in. So no footage available of that uh, as well. So, you know, what do we think, guys? Or is it one of those things that we can't really say until we've seen the footage? Mm, yeah, I think so. I mean, uh, <laughs> until we we see what's uh, you know what the crimes alleged to have been, then um, it's it's pretty difficult to to you know form a conclusive opinion one way or another. Which I know is sitting on the fence, but you know, right, yeah, uh, we, we can only what really. What more can we do? Yeah. Oh, well, I know. What more can we do? I mean, we've obviously read certain things on social media from you know, fans of both sides. You know, to you know, put the the blame in particular directions, but. Um, I think yeah, we, we need to see the footage, don't we, before we can uh, come to a, a conclusion mm-hmm. one way or another. And another uh, another one um, uh, from the clan again, this time on Saturday night against Belfast, Sebastian Silvestri of the Giants given a match penalty for headbutting on Saturday. Again, no footage there at all. Um, but, you know, that headbutting, that <laughs> sounds pretty bad. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it mm-hmm. depends on the severity of it. Again, how how much you know, we, we can't comment on it because there's there's no footage. So, I mean, am, am I right in thinking that both both games were at Brayhead? Yes. What are they looking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, just I, I I don't understand. I mean, I, I, as I understand it, there is a time limit on when you can request DOPS reviews. It's by um, six p.m. I think on the Monday after the game, after the yeah, weekend game. Yeah, so, I mean, that's 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 obviously passed, and I don't know about you guys, but I haven't seen anything from. I Dops think about I, I seem to remember it was Tuesday when Dops released yeah. what the reviews were for this week. So I mean, may, maybe yeah, maybe 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 those requests have. Yeah, maybe maybe those requests have gone in, but. Um, I forget who it was. This is quite patchy in my mind, but somebody uh, released footage. Uh, you know, re- well, they released the highlights of their game, but said that there was going to be an incident taken out uh, out of it while Dops were reviewing it. So they actually said, you know, here's the footage of the rest of our game, but we won't be showing this incident until Dops have ruled on it. So, I think that's you know, fair enough. To be no, fair. That is fair enough. So come on, Bray Clan, pull your finger out. Let's have your highlights up. Mm-hmm. What's you know what? And anybody. Anybody who can edit video, and you know, I'm sure you've got somebody very capable who can do that. Uh, you know, I'm I'm pretty certain they will be able to take out those incidents. While it, you know, if you have put a request in for them, you know, what what's wrong? What, what is wrong with being open? Well, the head with the head button call for Sylvester <laughs> was a match penalty, so that will get reviewed. Yeah. So I mean, but but again, you know, what what's the wrong what's what's wrong with being open and honest with your fans like and, and you know you'll have to excuse me whichever team it is that did it last week but you know somebody else it you know put the highlights out and said we won't be putting the, 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 this incident in because it's getting reviewed because it's because it's going to dot mm. get it done mm. you know don't don't leave you don't you know you, <clears> you've got a lot of fans who weren't able to watch those games you know from both sides because you don't do a webcast like us so <laughs> you know the least you can do is get those highlights out as soon as possible so that people can have a nosy at them yeah. you know, which is, which is take, to be fair to be fair to panthers they've got spot on at this this year because the well, highlights well, out i mean t- sometimes even on the same night the highlights are out exactly exactly you know credit to lace market media they're really they're, they're, you know they're, they're working hard on that to be honest so you know come on brad crack on you've had you've had three, you know two and three days to get that out mm. sort it out a uh, couple of tweets from our good friend chris lovell uh he says as a giants fan you can can say i'm biased however the league's reputation is destroyed if kirkham goes smith has to go too i've got to say i agree with that well, I mean, mm. the thing is, it's a, you, you, you know, I'm, you know we, we're going to end up with a adopt special Monday Night Review podcast if we're not careful. But um, this has happened under Tony Smith's watch. Mm. Sure, surely, you know, there's, he's got to be accountable for that. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and let's not forget, you know, he can say, "Oh yes, I had my Elite League Chairman's hat on." He's still the owner of the Sheffield Steelers, and up to that up to that point where Fretter was handed a six game ban, it was his team that. For want of a better way of putting it, we're getting away with that. Yeah, and it's his team since that have glorified him. Mm. Mm. Yeah, glorified Fretter, made him the poster boy of the franchise, and 
what have you. So, um, and I, uh, to be honest, I thought for a minute when he said Smith's got to go, I thought, what's Dean Smith done now? <laughs> <laughs> so, come on. <laughs> I'm, sorry, I'm sorry, do, do we have to call him two points only every time we talk about him? <laughs> 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 another another tweet from Chris he, he, about the the game on Sunday night. He says, "Guys, huge shout out to Capitals netminder, seventeen year old Jordan McLaughlin was outstanding for a youngster to do so well." Thanks, Chris. Uh, I mean, I'm taking it you was at the game. I'd, I'd heard reports that he played very very well, but uh, thanks for letting us know, and we are happy to uh, say that. So, congratulations, Jordan McLaughlin, for an excellent performance on Sunday night. Okay. Uh, we're going to wrap up now with a look ahead to Panthers games this week and tomorrow well they don't come much bigger uh, hope 5 past 1 hopefully if it's not delayed the four of us will be taking the easy jet flight from Luton to go to Zurich Switzerland to watch the ZCS, ZSC Lions take on the Nottingham Panthers in the Champions Hockey League round of 16 first leg the face off is at 8, 18.45 UK time or quarter to 7 in old money um, it will be live on Free Sports and is also going to be live on the BBC Sport website as well. That's how big this game is. It has been described uh, on the BBC Sports website today as the biggest game in British club hockey history. Um, is it? Yeah, I think it is. I think in terms of European competition, you know, this is uncharted territory for a UK side. So, yeah, I, I think that um, you've got to remember the calibre of teams we've played and beat. And, you know, now we've got another you know, giant of European ice hockey to, to play. So, yeah, I think those that are saying that it is the biggest game in British club co- hockey history, I'd absolutely agree with them. Well, you've just got to look around the post from around the league, from fans around the league. I think we've talked about it before. The amount of fans from different teams that are coming down to our our rink next week, yeah, yeah absolutely, to, to game, yeah. um, it, it's created a buzz. Not ob- obviously within the Panthers organisation. I can't wait. I'm, I'm fully expecting it to all blow up in the face and we get a ten nil. <laughs> Let's be honest. Come on, uh, Paul. Paul's hey, not on the podcast, happen. so I will be Mister uh, Mister. I'm not confident. Um, oh, he'll not be happy with you taking his catchphrase. <laughs> Um, I'm just oh. paying homage, um, but yeah, I mean, it, there's a buzz around the league, uh, not just in the Panthers organisation about this. And like Adam said, it's uncharted territory. The, not, I, I know bunkers are going to be showing it. The legend will be showing it. I assume the salt box will be showing it. Uh, that that Osbar, uh, the new Osbar on on um, James, James, James. James. Yeah, that's going to have it on. Um, he say I didn't realise it was on the BBC Sport website as well, but um, oh wow, um, we might get a mugs on the telly. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, 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 no! Nobody wants to see that. No, they don't. <laughs> well, I don't Maybe think there's much. I don't think there's much chances of us being drunk at eight pound a pint. <laughs> <No. laughs> yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Anybody who's going to bunkers to watch the game tomorrow night, we are. We, we, we'll be thinking of you with your match day discounts while we are crying <laughs> into our one and only pint at eight quid or, you know, or whatever sipping. it's going to be. <laughs> oh dear lord! <laughs> All right, back get back to the game. But what do Panthers need to do? tomorrow night to stand a chance of qualifying now I know it's a win or, or score lots of goals I, I don't mean that I mean what how, what would you what would you need or what do you think the result needs to be in order for us to have a chance of qualifying next Tuesday keep it to within two yeah mm. Mm. yeah I agree with that if you look at the from the groups if you look at the aggregates we, we lost 5-2 in Burn beat them 4-2 at the NIC. So the aggregate was 7-6 in Burns' favour. Turku won 5-2 in Finland. We beat them 2-0. So 5-4 in Turku's favour. If you look at them in the aggregates, we've kept it very close. So I would agree. Within two, I think we've got mm. to keep it. We, we've got to be very defensively smart tomorrow and keep out of the box. But they do have some exceptional players playing for them. Mm-hmm. Kevin Climbers at New York Rangers. 
Well, they do, year. but also, you know, the teams that we've already faced, they also have exceptional players. We just have to get back into that mentality. You know, we just have to be able to make the switch between Elite League and, and Champions Hockey League. You know, I yeah. mean, we we did seem to do that quite well, you know, that way around. You know, it, it's sort of been trying to adjust back to the Elite League where we, we seem to have struggled a little bit early, early on in the season. So I think... Yeah, we ju- we just need to go into the game with that same mentality. We have a plan, and you know the the the, the boys stick to the plan that Corey has because so far he's played a blinder. Mm. They they can't be overawed, you know. They no. can't be overawed by the names on on the, um, the shirts of of the opposition because if they start stargazing and thinking, crikey, you know that that guy's got three hundred games in the NHL. This guy's played all of his career in you know one of the top leagues in Europe then it sort of puts a bit of fear in you and, and you won't perform as well as you should do because, you know, you've got that in the forefront of your mind. You're thinking about the opposition more than you're thinking about what, what you can contribute to the game or what, you know, what, what you can bring to it. So I think, like Tina said, we, we've just got to stick to what served us well so far, you know, being smart, playing tight hockey, um, certainly away from home anyway, and, um, you know, just having a really, really good work ethic, making sure that we block shots, we get, you know, sticks down in shooting lanes. Um, but just, you know, every shift needs to be maximum effort because, you know, have three or four bad shifts against a, a side like Zurich, you know, the game could be over. The game could be over in a blink of an eye if you let your guard down. So you've got to play a really, really solid 60 minutes and, and you know, try and, uh, as you said, Jono, stay out of the box because... I imagine that if we hit penalty trouble, then yeah, mm. the Ant's prediction of a 10 0 drubbing might be on the cards. Yeah. I, and I'll the other it. thing, you're, you're absolutely right about saying we shouldn't be overawed. We haven't been overawed by the other teams. We, we, we no, played, we haven't. So no. We, we, um, and we've got the results we, we have. So, uh, you know, there we go. I, I, I think, well, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I am really, really looking forward to it. I cannot wait to get out of there tomorrow and watch my team. Play, play at the Hallenstadion in in Switzerland in, in, a, in a knockout European knockout game. Let's put it this way: Burn are top of the league at the moment. We beat them. Zurich yep. are third, so it should be a walk in the park, surely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll 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 step away from that straight away. Please address your complaints to at Marty Powers. Yes. <laughs> um, who gets the nodding goal? Because both Got their minders had stellar weekends. Who who gets the start Garnet. for this game? He's it, yeah. yeah. been he's been solid throughout well, the CHL campaign. Both be there. Mm. They'll both be there because there's no import limit, so one of them no. will be on the bench. No, that's fine. But but Garnet, yeah, um, he's, he's been. I, I, you know, I know, I know, no, I know, I know. Galbraith is a quality netty, mm. but Mike Garnet has been stunning. I think, I think he's at ninety two percent save average in in, in the competition yeah. in the group stage. Yeah. Can't, so, you, yeah. You, you cannot argue with that. <coughs> Mm. You know there might there might be a battle royale for the starting netminder's position in the elite league, but you know Garnet's made one hell of a case for himself already mm. in the CHL. So you know mm. give, give him the honour. Mm. Okay, well as we mentioned, we will be out there. We're flying out there tomorrow. Uh, we'll be doing live pods, podcasts and periscopes throughout the day. So, uh, so a pre-game and post-game podcast, hopefully. And probably the odd periscope as we travel to Zurich. So keep an eye out for those on Twitter at Cats Whiskers TV. Uh, they will also be on our Facebook page. So if you search for TCW on Facebook, like the page, and you'll be able to see those when they start. So the other games coming up this weekend. So on Friday, Panthers take on the Guildford Flames at the NIC with a 7:30 p.m. face-off. Two games against Guildford so far this season: an overtime win and a shootout win in Guildford. So again, no walk in the park. Guildford doing very well. They've started life in the Elite League very well, and uh, it's not going to be another walk in the park, is it, Am? Um, so much so that I'm not going. <laughs> I, I, I can't make it Friday, unfortunately. Um, I, I'm, I've got a work thing on, so uh, I'm expecting a very tight game again. They've not been very open these two games against Guildford. They've been very tight. They've been very niggly. Um, so it'd be nice to see um, us put a bit of evidence on, but um, it's going to be a tough. It will be another very, very tough game, especially coming back from Switzerland um, yes. a couple of days beforehand. Uh, and Panthers, second game of the weekend. 
is against the Milton Keen, Keen, Keens Lightning, this time in Milton Keynes. And after such a, a fantastic game on Saturday, are we expecting much of the same this Saturday? Must be because we're all going, aren't we? <laughs> yes, I, I'm, I'm taking the family. Um, my, my two-year-old daughter, every time now we go out in the car, she's going, going to Panthers, going to Panthers, going to Panthers. Uh, <laughs> I tell her no, and she starts crying. So, um, Well, we, we, that's that's just child abuse, John. You should take her to Panthers every day. I don't know what you're, <laughs> I, I don't, don't know what you're playing at. Yes, <laughs> no. But no, she, she seems to, you know... <clears throat> She's got a season ticket at the Steelers. That's obviously bread and butter and boring. Going to the Panthers is a treat for her, so she enjoys it. Which, you know, you've got to... <laughs> you can't argue with that, really. So, yes, we, we are going to Milton Keynes. Looking forward to it, uh, as you, I believe you you three are as well. Yeah, yeah we're stopping, we're stopping that's right. Over. That's true. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I, I are we expecting a similar game? I, I, can't, I don't see any good reason why not. Um it's, it's already they've set the bar mm. so yeah it's yeah i reckon it's going to be another corker and you know I, we, we we've got to keep the levels high because you know we're coming back from from zurich and we've got those two games at the weekend we've we've got to do it all again at home against zurich <laughs> so, mm. so so you know we've, we've we've got to keep the keep the intensity up so and milton Keynes are you know they're the the, the Fairly well placed in the table, and but but they they need to get a few more points, and, and I've already mentioned that stunning home record. So yeah. they'll, yes. they'll they'll be looking to keep keep that going, and we will be looking to end that. I'm sure. <laughs> so yes, uh, yes, we will. Seven o'clock, uh, Milton Keynes Lightning against the Panthers. Uh, it is selling out pretty quickly, so if you want want tickets, you better get on to Planet Ice Milton Keynes. Uh, the, the away block is already sold out. Block seven is is now where away fans can go if you haven't got your tickets yet. So you need to hurry for that. Uh, just one other bit of news that's come out uh, while we've been on air, Tina. Um, yes, uh, Panthers have announced the uh, time for the face-off against the Steelers uh, during the, uh, the Christmas period. Uh, that is, uh, They put that to a vote, which was very, very nice of them to do. And thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody else who voted the same as me because I'm at work. Uh, it's going to be a seven o'clock face-off. At the NIC on the twenty seventh. So, on so, the twenty seventh. So seven o'clock, twentieth, seventh of December. I think that's uh, fair enough for all the people. It is a normal working day after all. So fair enough for, so that everybody can make that game. Okay, we shall wrap it up there because we've all got packing to do and passports to find and who knows what before we... Uh, Speak for yourself, I'm ready, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am too, I was thinking about the other two. Um, <laughs> well, well, considering that Adam didn't have a passport this time last week. Now well, that's, that's, the true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Has he got one now, though? That's the... I have, oh, they all let me out of the country. Yes, um... and, it, and it actually looks like him now as well. <laughs> Uh, because the four of us will be travelling back from Zurich on Wednesday, there will be no Ask TCW this Wednesday. We are moving it to Thursday. So still get your questions in, in from the usual uh, formats. Twitter at Cat TV, TCW page on Facebook and all the Panthers groups. A dedicated thread on the Cage forum and also email. Uh, at, it's TCWOnlineTV at gmail.com. And uh, that is it. Uh, Panthers, do us proud tomorrow. I'm sure you will. Uh, we are all looking forward to going out and seeing that. It's a massive, massive game. You know, just do us proud, and uh, we will be right behind you in the Hallenstadion in in Switzerland. And I'm sure all those watching on TV will be right behind you as well. And that is it for this evening. So thank you very, very much. If you're in Switzerland or going to Switzerland, we will hopefully see you uh, around and about tomorrow. But all that remains from us is to say thank you very much to Tina Taylor. Good night. Adam Reddish. <laughs> I'll just go with good night. <laughs> and Antoine Marie John. Panthers, you've made history multiple times before. We can do it again. But regardless of what happens, we are massively proud of what you have achieved as a club this season. Thank you very much and good night. We'll see you on Thursday. And what a beautiful way to end the show. Thank you very much to you for listening and we shall see you over the week.
Ta-da! This edition of the Cat's Whiskers podcast was brought to you by the Bunkers Hill Hockley.